hello again this is uh, our wisdom wednesday my viewers and today we are having a great guest i already posted up there i believe you all read about it i got a lot of comments and likes and today i'm ready we are ready to get going with doctor with professor cherry Keita, who is a son of one of the heroes who maybe some of you do not know about uh he is from mali and his brother actually fought fought for this nation, fought for our nation, fought for our freedom in one way or another after surviving the World War II, okay? So today I will be talking with him. We are going to communicate and talk a little bit about his journey and the things that he went through. And therefore, uh, as usual, we are going to take a minute and share the video. So feel free to share the video. I see people have already started joining in. That is awesome. Uh, go ahead and tag the people you want to join us. And then we are going to be having Professor Keita in one minute. Okay. So as usual, those who are joining us for the first time, this is this is the Gina Mugai show. And the purpose and the goal of this show is to provide you, especially as an African, with information, with tools, with resources, with connections, and more so, with ways that you can be able to chase your dreams achieve your goals and grow in your career through learning from people who are more inspirational who have walked your journey and who actually can help you to get where you are going okay and therefore we will take one second and share after we share our video we will get dr uh, professor kita on the screen and we will get started i see gloria is already here okay thank you glow so we are gonna just share for one second. One second, glow, take a moment and share with other people so that we can have them coming online, okay? That is what I will do in a second, just to make sure most of the people had written to me asking me to tag them, to write to, to, write to them once we go live, but you know, we can only do this for too long. So that is why I need your help in doing this, in getting people to know and to tune in so that we can get started with doctor okay uh, so just a second i see people are do joining in okay mo is there uh diwangari yes you guys uh, invite other people mo go ahead and invite um go ahead and invite other your friends so many people had asked me to let them know once we are live with Dr. with Professor Keita. Please go ahead and invite them. I will do the same in a second. Okay. And those who are joining us for the first time, be sure to follow this show because this is where you come to get in your inspirational dose every Wednesday. And this is where I help you by providing you with tools, with information, with resources, with all that you need to achieve your goals and dreams, okay? I'm going to share one more second and then we will start streaming with Dr. with Professor Keita. Okay, all right, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, I'm going to get him on the camera uh, in a second. For some reason, for those who had asked me to uh, to tag them, I am not able to tag. I don't know, something is up with my computer. Um, what we will do, we will just we will just share it after we are done because I don't want to take any more time for those who are already here. And therefore, I will just go ahead and share. Um, you guys invite whoever you want to invite. For me, I am not able to share much more, okay? Amal, go ahead and share for me. Um, and now we are going to be bringing our guest today. Thank you so much, guys, for joining. It's awesome to have you guys over here. And as you can see, I am seated next to Professor Keita, Sheriff Keita. And I am going to welcome him so that he can tell us about himself. We can start there. I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. Yes, Kate, that's why. Yeah, very well. Yes, yeah. thank, thank you. you. Yes, okay. Yes. Yeah, yes. I will give you a chance to let the viewers know about you and who you are and what okay. you do as we okay. now get ready to get into the nitty gritty of it. Okay. Thank you very much, Gina, for mm -hmm. this welcome on your wonderful show. And uh, it's definitely a great honor for me to connect with your wonderful 
audience of uh, followers. I am Sharif Keita, uh, born in Mali, West Africa. Uh, and uh, probably you know a bit about the history of Mali, which used to be called the French Sudan. I will talk about that uh, in that old name because uh, that would be very important when I talk about the war. Uh, because Mali used to be a colony of France. That's why it was called the French Sudan up until 1960. Okay. So that's why I was born in the capital city, but mm -hmm. uh, Bamako. But I spent my early childhood in a small village uh, about 40 kilometers from Bamako uh, called Juliba. Juliba, okay. uh, some of you, particularly the music lovers among you, may have heard of uh, a very well known musician named Salif Keita. Oh. Salif Keita is a cousin of mine, hmm. and I wrote a number of books about him. And in fact, his latest album, his last studio album, uh, the one he calls his last studio album, mm -hmm. uh, that remains to be seen. Uh, how can a musician uh, retire, really? But uh, is, <laughs> he, that, uh, that CD that just came out mm -hmm. called uh, Un Autre Blanc, uh, I am the one who wrote the sleeve notes of that album. Hmm. He asked me specifically so to do that. To write so, it, yeah. yeah, so I grew up, uh, I spent my early childhood in Salif Keita's village, and our parents were very close friends. Hmm. Anyway, so then I was sent back to the capital city to pursue my education. Mm -hmm. uh, at the middle school level and then uh, high school. That's and in Mali. That's why. Mm -hmm. and, and then I left Mali after high school mm -hmm. uh, to go to Europe okay. uh, for my undergraduate studies. Oh, Belgium, wow. Belgium, specifically. Okay. Where I stayed for about five years and a half. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was trained in a school for translators uh, in English and Russian. Hmm. So those were my majors. Okay. So after I finished my undergraduate uh, and professional uh, training in uh, in Belgium. That's when I moved to the United States for graduate studies okay. at the University of Georgia, mm -hmm. where I took a PhD in Romance languages with uh, African literature and uh, political science uh, and history as uh, my minor. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. So and then I came to Minnesota mm -hmm. in 1985. So I've been in Minnesota <laughs> oh, wow. since uh -huh. 1985. Uh, to <laughs> yeah, teaching at Carleton College. Okay. Uh, you probably may have heard of, about it. Mm -hmm. It's a small liberal arts college in uh, Northfield, Minnesota, mm -hmm. of about uh, two thousand, less than two thousand students. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so I've been teaching the French there, mm -hmm. uh, African and Caribbean literature. Mm -hmm. But I'm also in the media studies program because uh, part of my work for the past twenty years has been to make documentary films. Okay. And uh, so I'm also part of the Africana Studies nice. program. Awesome. Yes, okay. yes. So so this is, uh, uh, in a nutshell, <laughs> my <laughs> long journey. That's a rich history. That to, is to, a rich to Minnesota. profile. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so um, you mm -hmm. sound, it sounds like you come from a well, well-to-do family in Africa back in the no, day. No, 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 not at all, no, uh -huh. no, not at all. In fact, uh, you know, that's uh, the whole uh, reason why I made this uh, last film, which mm -hmm. is my fourth film, mm -hmm. documentary film, titled Nambala Keita, mm -hmm. A Soldier in His Village. Hmm. That's the title of my most recent film. Okay. Uh, that is being just launched. We had a premiere mm -hmm. uh, at Carlton College and then a premiere at, in Ohio at Oberlin College. Mm -hmm. So we're just launching the film right now. Oh, That's why I made this film, because uh, to show that, uh, you know, uh, if today I am a professor mm -hmm. at one of uh, America's and the world's most prestigious schools, mm -hmm. uh, it's not because uh, money uh, or my family's uh, uh, wealth brought me here. Mm -hmm. It's because I come from a very humble background mm -hmm. uh, with a father who never went to school, who was born in a village, mm -hmm. in a very remote village in Mali, okay. called Nana Kenyeba, and had no education, uh, left the village uh, at a young age to go work in Senegal mm -hmm. as a farm laborer. Hmm. Uh, because in those days, during the colonial days, uh, just to give a perspective, uh, historical perspective to people, the colonial days started in Mali around the end of the 19th century and lasted until 1960. Hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So many of the countries in West Africa uh, had the same uh, colonial experience. They all came under French, mm -hmm. direct French influence mm -hmm. at the end of the 19th century. Mm -hmm. So uh, French West Africa was a, a federation of colonies mm -hmm. like the Ivory Coast, uh, Mauritania, uh, Senegal, Guinea, the French Sudan, 
Upper Volta, Niger. So all those countries, uh, and, Be and Dahomey in mm -hmm. those days, mm -hmm. okay? So all those countries formed French West Africa. Mm -hmm. And uh, Dakar, Senegal, mm -hmm. was the capital of that okay. federation. Okay. And also it was also, Senegal was also, uh, I would say the economic driver of, of that, of that area, region. So okay. uh, it was very, uh, 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 it was a custom for the young people from the neighboring colonies of Senegal mm. to go work on peanut plantations okay. in Senegal because Senegal had uh, uh, really adopted peanuts or I don't know if it's the French that imposed that, uh, that crop mm -hmm. as the cash crop. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So 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 to get money, you uh, had to go. You had to go work okay. in the French economic system, mm -hmm. so you could bring back money to pay mm -hmm. the taxes, mm. the head tax, and I'm sure East Africa also had head tax under the colonial system, hmm. where for every member of your household, you have to pay a tax. For all of them. All of them, including those who don't work. Oh, oh, oh yes, the head of the family have to pay. <laughs> Wow. Well, that's okay. what the, that was a colonial system. Mm -hmm. So, and it, it was incumbent upon the younger people mm -hmm. to go get the money, either by working in the city mm -hmm. where they could get the colonial currency, okay. or go to Senegal in this case, mm -hmm. where you could go farm, but hire yourself out. So that's how a, your dad had to go to yes, Senegal to that's work. Right. So oh, okay. he did that for mm -hmm. three seasons. He would go there, mm -hmm. and uh, when the war broke out mm -hmm. in 1939, mm -hmm. that's where he was, yeah, I see. working as an illiterate farm laborer. Mm, uneducated. Uneducated, that's right. Okay. Because there was no reading or writing in my native language, mm -hmm. which is called Bambara. It Maybe. was French. Uh, French, is, no, French is the official language, mm -hmm. but... Our native language is called Bambara. Bambara. Okay. Bambara. Okay. It has many names because it's a pretty widespread language. Okay. Not as widespread as Swahili, mm -hmm. but a kind of regional language <laughs> mm -hmm. that would have different names. I in the Ivory Coast, they call it Jula. Mm -hmm. In Burkina Faso, they call it Jula. Mm -hmm. In uh, certain parts, they call it Malenke. Yeah, so anyway, so that's the, the language my father spoke, but it wasn't a written language. It's so he had no education. Okay. So it's really uh, the desire to see. Uh, a wider world that, he that had kind to of leave. He, that's why he had to leave. Mm -hmm. But he, he 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 joined the French army mm -hmm. as a colonial soldier. Oh because, yeah, that's where now I want us to talk okay, about your okay, father. Okay, okay, Because um, yes. I understand, and this is how I got to learn a lot about you is through okay. your father. He, that's right, my father's story. Yeah, yes. he, who, who had to go like for World War II. Yeah, that's right. Because some of us, mostly people of my yes, of mostly, your age. Of the, <laughs> The we world, the millennials. The, 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 war, mm -hmm. the, war, the, the two world wars are very remote. <laughs> right. We kind of read it in history th books, which is, is boring, and yes. you kind of want to learn about it, but mm. then you're like, this is World War yeah. Two, World that, that, War One. Like, yeah. what started it? That is like, true. What? That is true. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so and World War Two. What your father participated in. Yes, How yes. did he end up being in World War Two and surviving yes, it? Because uh, Europe was uh, in the fascist role, and the colonizer mm -hmm. needed help. The from colonizer. the colonizer, that's right. <laughs> you see, yeah. the, the colonizer was in trouble mm -hmm. and decided that, well, we need to call on the colonized uh -huh. to come and bail us out, mm -hmm. uh, to come and save us. Right. So that's why, that's how France mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, 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 enlisted a lot of African soldiers, mm -hmm. Great Britain, England did the same thing mm -hmm. in East Africa, mm -hmm. in Nigeria and places like that. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they also enlisted the troops. Hmm. So. Uh, in the case of uh, uh, France, mm -hmm. they used to call them Senegalese tirailleurs. Tirailleur is a French word that is very hard to translate, okay. uh, but it roughly it corresponds to soldiers, but soldiers of a lesser quality. Because again, the, the, the colonial discrimination was such that mm -hmm. they wouldn't even give them the, the dignified name of soldiers. Oh, because they are black and slaves. Yeah, that's right. Not <laughs> slaves, but colonial subjects. Okay. okay. You know, so mm -hmm. of inferior in a status, mm -hmm. second class or uh, third class citizens. Not even second. Class. That's right, exactly. <laughs> so I was mm -hmm. simply colonial subject. Mm -hmm. So they wouldn't even uh, give them that title of soldiers. Mm -hmm. They created a term called tirailleur, Senegalais. They called them Senegalese because, again, when they were all uh, conscripted, mm -hmm. their base was Senegal. Hmm. 
So before sending them to the world theater in Europe, mm -hmm. they all were given the label Senegalese. Hmm. Although they came from different colonies. Is that like the way they were calling black people in America Negroes? Uh, not really, like not, not, not really because again, Senegal, as I said, mm -hmm. was the heavyweight of the French colonial West Africa. Right. So therefore, and that's where mm -hmm. the main base mm -hmm. of the army for the colonial troops was. Okay. So therefore, they just called them Senegalese. Mm. Okay. Tirayo Senegalese. Okay. And that's how they sent them mm -hmm. uh, to Europe. That's how my father, mm. uh, through Morocco, mm Tunisia, mm -hmm. and uh, they were put on boats to cross the Mediterranean mm. and go fight on the Italian front. I see. Which was one of the most lethal and brutal front Where of you the can Second fight World and War. Because they were fighting against the fascists, hmm. both the German, mm -hmm. Hitler, mm -hmm. and Mussolini. Mussolini was the head of the Italian fascist hmm. government. Okay. So those two had an alliance, a kind of fascist alliance. Mm -hmm. So when the free world, you know, uh, although they were not free because France was occupied mm -hmm. by the Germans, mm -hmm. uh, and America, the US, uh, and England uh, tried to drive them out of Italy. Mm -hmm. That's really one of the uh, some of the worst combats hmm. took place. So my father was, uh, part, of was part of that, and he survived. And he survived. And he, he survived that. Did he have any like aftermath or effects? Well, came yes. That they war? they said as I was growing up, mm -hmm. you know, I, you know, I was I was uh, I, I was born after really he had kind of overcome okay. some of the difficulties he had okay. because he came back uh, with a lot of trauma. Uh, which in those days, uh, science really didn't tell us much. We didn't know about PTSD and all these things. Mm -hmm. But from uh, as, I, as, uh, as I was growing up, uh, the way my father's behavior was described mm -hmm. uh, showed that he was really, he came back traumatized. Oh, in wow. fact, I remember uh, mm -hmm. specifically that he used to talk about a plane, mm -hmm. a British plane mm -hmm. called the Brist Bristol Bowfighter. Mm -hmm. Apparently, this plane, sometimes he would even draw it on the ground, you know, you see, mm -hmm. make drawings of it. I mean, this plane really uh, impressed my father. Apparently, the British launched that uh, long-range bomber during the Second World War, mm -hmm. and it, it did a lot of damage among the enemy. Mm -hmm. So, this plane that really impressed my father, he came back, literally fixated on it, and apparently he also came back speaking some English words, mm -hmm. because it gave a chance to West African soldiers from the French speaking part to also meet soldiers from the English speaking part of Africa and even black Americans, hmm. you see? Mm -hmm. So that experience was very important because it's that experience of a wider world mm -hmm. that later translated into a kind of pan-Africanist sp uh, spirit, mm -hmm. a spirit of uh, 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 unity mm -hmm. among the colonized mm -hmm. to try to challenge the colonial system. So the war, uh, however uh, 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 traumatizing it was, for that generation, it also created an impetus for Africans and the colonized people of Asia, Africa, America, the African Americans, mm -hmm. to really know each other and develop a pan-African consciousness that we are part of the colonized people, okay. therefore we have the same interests, mm -hmm. regardless, uh, uh, you know, uh, without regard to our colors, mm -hmm. we are all suffering from the same colonial system. Mm -hmm. So that consciousness was very important and particularly too uh, many of the soldiers that fought fought against uh, uh, on the side of the colonizer in exchange for the promise of a better status mm -hmm. for the colonists, an improvement in the colonial relationship. You see what I mean? Yeah. So, so they all came uh, with a lot of uh, determination mm -hmm. to really support and free mm -hmm. the, the, the mother country, as they used to call it. Uh, uh, in Kenya, you would call uh, England the mother country. Right. We in France, uh, you in Mali and West Africa, would call them France, France the mother country. Mm -hmm. So they all came with that determination to fight and liberate. Right. But they realized that, well, we are fighting to liberate uh, uh, France or to save democracy while we don't have democracy. Hmm. You see? Mm -hmm. And it's just like the African-American soldiers. Mm -hmm. In fact, just recently, uh, uh, a Tuskegee Airman, you probably heard of the Tuskegee Airman. Mm -hmm. uh, the Tuskegee uh, Institute uh, was founded by Booker T. Washington, a black American educationalist, who also wanted an education tailored and 
uh, appropriate to his people mm. to so it can help them mm -hmm. get ahead. So the Tuskegee Institute was founded by Booker T. Washington. Who is a black. A black American, mm -hmm. that's right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when he started a school, mm -hmm. within that school, that's where the first black American pilots who fought, you know, during the Second World War, mm -hmm. that's where they were trained. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the Tuskegee Airmen became mm -hmm. a very well-known, legendary uh, group of uh, uh, courageous fighters mm. who, just like the fellow uh, African-Americans, right. went to fight in Europe and to save democracy the... when they were living under Jim Crow here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when they came back, they challenged the system. Yeah, so the true. same thing for my father's generation. They challenged the system. That when they came the back, realism. when they came back, mm -hmm. they came back with an idea that, well, you know, uh, things have to change. We yes. cannot return to our villages mm -hmm. and continue to suffer right. the arbitrary nature mm -hmm. and the brutal nature and, uh, and also some taxation, some unjust taxation mm -hmm. that we were living under. So they said, no, we're going to, to ask for more rights. Mm -hmm. You see, in <laughs> fact, uh, that's the reason why in 1944, mm -hmm. uh, G General de Gaulle, Charles mm -hmm. de Gaulle, mm -hmm. there is an airport in Paris. Named after him. Named after him. Ch Charles de Gaulle. <laughs> if you go there, weird. that's the, the the French leader. And so, how did your father transition all of yes. that to overcoming the trauma and then well, to so, studying? School? Yes. Well, I guess I guess you know he was one of the lucky ones because many of the soldiers came back. They came back so traumatized that they literally developed into full blown madness. Mm. Oh yes. Oh yeah. I mean, oh, so many wreckage of people, human beings that mm. came back from the war, and in those days. They had no veteran administration right. uh, to take care of their problems. So how did he overcome that? My father was very lucky because his, uh, his own uncle mm -hmm. had fought in World War I hmm. and had be come back to Mali and had become, uh, I would say, a, 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 an important uh, vet, army veteran and an important member of society. So I think that that's what people say, that he helped my father really Mm -hmm. uh, recover his uh, his his, uh, oh, I his balance. I mean, oh, I, yeah, I think he advised him. Hmm. You know, he was talking to him. Uh, about counseling. Does, yeah, counseling. Oh, yes, that's right. okay. And some people will say that he had uh, 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 heal, uh, healing capacities. Mm -hmm. But again, I think it's the counseling part. The counseling and also, I mean, he, my father wasn't married at that point. Mm -hmm. I think he found a wife for my for my father, okay. who is my mother. Mm -hmm. Then to really bring my father back into a normal social. Life. Human type That's of right. life. And yes. it is mm -hmm. part of that, uh, with my father coming back from the war, mm -hmm. with the competency, a little bit of competency in reading and writing. Mm -hmm. That's the, the key. Mm -hmm. My father was able to learn to read and write in French. Mm -hmm. So when he came back with that knowledge, mm -hmm. he was hired in the colonial service. First of all, in the hygiene corps. There was a corps called the hygiene corps, mm -hmm. which was a very important service in the colonial administration. It was meant to make the cities clean so that mosquitoes wouldn't bite the Europeans and give them malaria so they would die. <laughs> they so, don't want to die. No, they don't want to die. That's, <laughs> what, that's what I mean. So because they have no immunity mm -hmm. <laughs> against malaria. So they made sure that the cities mm -hmm. were clean okay. of stagnant water mm -hmm. and dirt and so forth. So my, my, uh, the uh, colonial service liked to employ former soldiers oh, okay. because they come with a sense of discipline right they come with they they come, already know the yeah, that's, exposed. that's right exactly. you see what i mean so yeah. my father then with that little bit of education mm -hmm. was hired in the colonial service nice. in the hygiene call and now this is in mali in in french sudan it oh, was okay. still called the french sudan french sudan it, called, it became mali Later. after independence okay. in 1960. okay although it was called mali mm -hmm. during the medieval time mm. in the pre-colonial time mm. okay so after independence, Mali took back the name Mali. And is that the time your father now is coming to start a uh, first institutional? Uh, oh, oh, well, okay, so, okay. So my father then, as a, he was trained as a nurse, mm -hmm. and then, and posted in a village, in the village of Salif Keita, the mm -hmm. singer, mm -hmm. Jolie, about forty kilometers, where I spent my early childhood. Okay. My father was the head of the medical center there. It was a small medical center, very small village medical health center. Mm -hmm. So because of the education he got during the war, which he got at the price of literally his life, hmm. <laughs> you know, he came back with that education. Therefore, he was able to use that platform to build a career for himself where he could gain some salary. Mm -hmm. He became a civil servant. Mm -hmm. 
although it wasn't the biggest <laughs> a big salary mm -hmm. you know but again he was privileged in relation to the farming the farmers who had no education mm -hmm. and had only that to rely on Wow. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. So my father then, because he was so committed to education, mm -hmm. he saw what a little bit of education did for him. He realized, well, because in my whole region, there's, no there's no school. That's why he never went to school. He said, well, I'm going to use that platform, save my, my money, a little bit of money. And my mother, at that time, he had two wives, my mm -hmm. mother and uh, her co-wife, mm -hmm. uh, who worked also to s contribute to the savings. Hmm. Of my father. That is good. Back in the day, that's right. Wives working. That's right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They were doing uh, a little cottage industry mm -hmm. of uh, of uh, of uh, how would you call it uh, dyeing clothes. Okay. Indigo, indigo. I don't know if in East Africa you have indigo. It's a kind of uh, 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 color co uh, color mm -hmm. that you dye clothes with. I don't know. I think it, <laughs> India has a lot of it. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so 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 they would do that mm -hmm. to get some income, mm -hmm. and that part of the saving would be added to my father's salary, mm -hmm. and then that's how they he were able to the build okay. the first classes and now of I... that school in his home area, in his home village of Nana Kenyaba, hmm. that had no school. As I said, thirty miles around there was no school. Hmm. Wow. In fact, people used to walk more than thirty miles to go when they receive the letter hmm. for somebody to read the letter for them oh in french wow you see so and so there was a need for education and now he starts uh, the school like a week after oh, independence well yeah the school opens its door one week after mali's independence does so, that mean he was preparing ahead oh, that's, of time? That, that's right that's right that's oh right. he already saw the dream that, and he that, was that, working that, on that it that is right hmm. you see because okay. he realized that mm -hmm. independence would be a pipe dream mm -hmm. if his people didn't know how to read and write right right Good. You know, regardless of you know the type of education, they mm -hmm. have to know how, how to, to read, read and, write. and how to write. You see, and what is interesting, I'd like to strike a kind of contrast between you know the British colonies and the French colonies. Mm -hmm. There is a fundamental difference. Mm -hmm. In the British colonies, the missionaries were given a leeway to really be in charge of the educational system. Right. Because the missionaries were given space both to Christianize, yes, but also to even take your languages and write them, to take the local languages mm -hmm. and develop a script in them, mm -hmm. so they could use that to evangelize people. Teach everybody. Well, in the French system, mm -hmm. the French were what you call very anti-clerical, mm -hmm. and that goes back to the French Revolution. Mm -hmm. The French Revolution was based really was geared towards overthrowing the power of the church. Oh wow! So they why not, they kind That's of right. tried to keep the literacy. Gone, that's right the government the government was in charge of that okay. of the educational system not the missionaries well they gave them very little space I see. so so therefore mm -hmm. if the government if the colonial government mm -hmm. didn't start the schools mm -hmm. there was no school I see. so my father realized that well his region is so remote if he does not build a school there no one will <laughs> so when would it how long would it take for the uh, education to get there I see. so he felt that uh, you know it was his duty mm -hmm. as somebody who had been who had, had a chance at least he was exposed to the that, developed that, 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 that's why exactly you mm -hmm. see what i mean yeah. mm -hmm. so he felt that you know if uh, you know children in his home village were able to to learn to read and write then they would be able to help their parents right they the, you know, if yeah. they receive letters, mm -hmm. they can write letters for their parents, they can read letters, mm -hmm. and also they can build a future for themselves that is true. in the new system. And so how do you find, what yes. is the importance of preserving this? Because um, you have done quite a <clears throat> lot, first yes. of all, you're preserving your father's name, you're working on the history and trying to preserve it. Yes. yes what is yes. the importance of doing all of this? Well, like, well, why should well, we care? Well, first of all, you see, I believe that... Mm -hmm. As somebody, as a historian, you know, that's one of my uh, lines of work, is that that generation of soldiers mm -hmm. uh, have not been really uh, appreciated enough. True. There is a whole generation, I mean, your generation, you probably don't know. Oh, right now, just a, a, few, a few weeks ago, mm -hmm. the U.S. was celebrating the 75th anniversary of World War II. Hmm. And on television... The veterans were celebrated, okay, uh, 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 documentaries were made about them, mm -hmm. uh, 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 old footage from the war, mm -hmm. just to show the generations that are living today, mm. of the grandchildren, 
what the grandparents did. Yeah, took care of the world. Okay? Mm -hmm. So I felt that in Africa, that's what we are missing because that generation of soldiers who fought for independence, although mm -hmm. they were not the ones with the ideological discourse, you know? Mm -hmm. No, mm -hmm. but they were simple people. They were firm the people. Physically. That's right, you see what I mean? Mm -hmm. I believe that they have not been appreciated enough by historians. That brings a really good question that yes. I want to ask you. First, mm -hmm. because you're a That's professor. Right. Second right. of all, yes. you're coming from a genealogy with your father who survived the war, yes. and you're a historian. Yes, yes, yes. Why is it that in Africa, for yes. instance, here in America, That's you right. say it, yeah. that yeah. it's yeah. a 75th year, oh, oh, they yes. are celebrating, oh, yes. everyone is knowing. Why That's is it right. in Africa we do not have this? We do not even have this information. We don't even learn this from school. Well, this because for me, I didn't even know anything, like whatever you're telling me right now. That's right. Why is there that huge gap in Africa about History. There is a huge gap because history is still uh, 50, 60 years after our independence, uh, our, our acquisition of so-called sovereignty. Mm -hmm. We still have not Africanized our history or our whole educational system mm -hmm. has not been Africanized. That's right. I made that word. <laughs> to serve mm -hmm. our interests first, Africa first. Hmm. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. Our interests as people of a certain history, historical background, a people of a certain economic, socio-economic mm -hmm. you know, conditions, mm -hmm. people with a certain vision of how our future should be organized. We have not tailored our educational system to serve that purpose enough yet. Uh, certain countries mm -hmm. are ahead of others. Mm -hmm. There are different degrees, mm -hmm. you see. But, but if you look at the teaching of history, mm -hmm. of our history, mm -hmm. we are still not... Uh, Africa centered yet. You know? I see. And to comment it's, on yes. that, it's not just in history, even yes. in economics, even in in yeah, everything, right. you yes. find that what you learn in school yes. and what you do at work after school, there's a huge gap. There's, That's right. there's a career gap over that, there. That is true. So, what would you because, or are you doing anything as a what, what, <laughs> what, what education, first of all, I mean, the, the, the meaning of education mm -hmm. is nothing else uh, but to train people to question the environment. So if the education is not talking about your environment, mm -hmm. then it's not a good education then. Yeah, and you, you know You see what I mean? <laughs> so, so therefore, I mean, mm -hmm. uh, we'll get a, a good education uh, the day we really adapt and focus our questions on our environment, on our people, How can and their relationship that? to the outside world. Mm -hmm. And using the vantage point of where we are, the center, Africa being the center, Mm -hmm. and looking at the world. And how can we get there? That's right. Mm -hmm. That's education. Mm -hmm. So so as uh, historians, as uh, teachers of literature, as teachers of anything, economics, mm -hmm. we have to adapt the teaching materials to that reality. Mm. So my preoccupation in this particular film project, mm -hmm. just as in my previous three film projects, mm -hmm. which were uh, re uh, 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 carried out in South Africa, mm -hmm. because for 20 years, I've worked in South Africa. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. On South African history. So my uh, focus on this film was in this film was really to bring attention to that generation mm -hmm. of Africans who were literally sacrificed in a way. Mm -hmm. You see, mm -hmm. and the, the the colonizer did not really show them gratitude, mm -hmm. although they saved the tale of the colonizer. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> what do you mean they saved the tale? Well, if, without them, Paris. Mm -hmm would not be liberated. The Germans had occupied the entire France. Mm. Free France, the so-called free France, was nowhere. Mm. In fact, the first territory of free France was Chad. The same Chad in, in Central Africa. Okay. Because De Gaulle, when he started his, uh, his uh, resistance movement, it's the colony of Chad that said, we are, the governor general said, we are free France. So. We started the reconquest, the conquest of France, mm -hmm. the recovery of France mm -hmm. was started from Central Africa. Wow. Okay. Okay. So yeah. then I feel that mm -hmm. the, the, on the one hand, the, the French uh, colonizer did not show much gratitude to that generation. Okay. But also the younger generations of African leaders who were more educated, mm -hmm. who had proper education in schools, who later become the nationalist leaders, the independence generation leaders. They did not show enough gratitude to that generation either. I see. So I felt that as the son of a person of that generation, mm -hmm. not just in Mali, I mean across Africa. I mean, you go to East Africa. In fact, just recently BBC uh, has been uh, 
publishing uh, radio documentaries mm -hmm. about the forgotten African soldiers of World War II. Mm -hmm. I know you you do you, you see what work I mean? with other people. Exactly. So that generation. So for, so for me, it was important to bring that history back mm -hmm. into the consciousness of the young people like yourself. I see. And also of generations that are younger than I am, mm -hmm. the older generation between you and me. I okay. See. So mm -hmm. they would begin to understand that history mm -hmm. and show them more, more gratitude and also understand and teach their history. Yeah, I see. Okay. We have a question here. I'm okay. going to read it. All right. Okay. Very good. answer it and okay. then we can continue. Okay. Very good. And it's coming from Mo. She's, okay. she's asking, okay. who writes our curriculum in Africa? That's right. I think we learn about the Western more than our own history. Yes, yes. How come we mm. are not even through about slavery? Mm. We are not even taught about slavery. We That's learn right. it from here when we are actually mm -hmm. started. Can we restructure the curriculum? Yes, we can and we should. And you are right. Uh, 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 audience member, you are very right. This is a personal question. Uh, are curriculum writers, not enough of us, are working in that endeavor? And I believe that the more we can involve ourselves in, in that, in shaping the curriculum, mm. and the more we can uh, take up those topics that you mentioned, very important topics, mm. the better our education system is going to serve our people mm. and our youth. Mm. The better we're going to be focused in our development goals. Okay. The better we're going to be focused in really developing ourselves right. in relation to the rest. I see. You see. So yes, and uh, I hope that again through a film, through a documentary film, and through my past films, mm -hmm. we've been shown on television mm -hmm. in South Africa, in West Africa. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping that this film also will be shown in soon in Mali and in Senegal. Mm -hmm. But I'm hoping also that. Uh, why not? Um, maybe somebody could do a version of this film in Swahili. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm, one thing I'm really hoping. Right. I can work with people from East Africa mm -hmm. uh, to, uh, to translate. That's why right now the film is in French and Bambara, my native language, okay. because I interviewed, for instance, my moms who don't speak French. They okay. never went to school, so they speak my language. Mm -hmm. So the film is in that language. So I'm hoping that you know the film can be in other African languages. Nice. So the film can be shown. Uh, to, to young people in different countries. I see. And now, so that's my uh, hope, yes. Professor, you mm -hmm. see that, uh, for mm -hmm. instance, someone like you, you're doing something actively to help mm -hmm. shed this light, okay? Mm -hmm. You're writing, you're producing films, you're teaching in college and university. Mm -hmm. And then when you come to East Africa, your friend, mm -hmm. um, Gugi Wadiyamo, well, you guys are close. He's an elder uh, yeah, he's, to me. Yes. Yeah, and he's like mm -hmm. uh, someone. Somebody who you, I look up to, yes. You look up to look him, up, yeah. and he's actually a very renowned author oh, in yes, Kenya, and we look up. To him. And all over the world, mm -hmm. all, all, over the, the world. all over the world, it's so the pride of feel, Africa. Yes. Yeah. Do yeah. you feel like the mm -hmm. little contribution that mm -hmm. you do and whatever Ngugi does and yes. somebody else? Do you feel like it makes any impact at oh, all? Oh, it does. Oh, it does. Mm -hmm. It's it's just a matter of consolidating, okay. not uh, just uh, you know scattering our efforts. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know. Yes. I mean, you know, uh, uh, people uh, like uh, uh, Ngugi, Professor mm -hmm. Ngugi, mm -hmm. uh, his writings, mm -hmm. you know, are being studied now throughout Africa, okay? okay? Mm -hmm. There are also some uh, African writers who write in, in French, mm -hmm. whose works also are studied in other parts of Africa. Everywhere. And even uh, Professor Ngugi now writes in Gukuyu, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. So, and uh, is being translated from Gukuyu into English. Right. So we should also, our people mm -hmm. should maybe also develop the talent in our own languages and then mm -hmm. be translated into French and English and Japanese and all those European languages. Now that brings another very good that, question. Yes, yes, yes. You see, most of the time you find Africans, the moment they leave Africa yes. or they get a different opportunity yes. or even they get engaged with people from different areas other mm. than Africa, That's right. we are very proud to abandon our culture. We think it's not even cool to associate with Swahili, with mm -hmm. uh, Ugali, with things yeah. like that, which yeah. are typical yeah. African, yes. and we yes. adopt the Western culture real quick. It's a tragedy. So, yeah, so when you say that um, some people can start writing in the yes. native language, that's in right, the that's Swahili, right. that's uh, right. nurturing those talents, yes, yes. there's already this gap. Do the, you experience that? And well, why oh, is there? There is a big gap. Mm -hmm. Because again, you see, it's all due to the educational system. Mm. The educational system that, again, is not Africa-centered. Oh, yes. When you're not taught to love yourself, when you're not taught, when you're not taught to, live, to love yourself, when you're not taught that your history, your people have a history, mm. then you will value it. Because in fact, the colonial ethos was that 
Africa had no history. Mm. They'll say, well, history came only with us. When you, we started writing your history, and what kind of history? They say, when we started writing your barbaric history, that's when you, be, you got a history. But who wants to, uh, to, uh, to identify with the type of history if that's all you taught? Mm. If you're not taught that in the medieval times, mm. that we had prestigious empires and kingdoms which had relationship with the outside world. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. just uh, lately, uh, the, the, uh, uh, we talk about the empire of Mali, right. the Songhai Empire, mm -hmm. the Ghana Empire, Okay, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in uh, the Hausa kingdoms and so forth. And as far as, uh, as, far as uh, Southern Africa, mm -hmm. the kingdom of Monomotapa mm -hmm. and places like that. Mm -hmm. So if you don't learn that history of that prestigious history mm -hmm. and also with the bad and good side, right. it's human history. Mm -hmm. But if you don't study it, mm -hmm. then how would you value it? You will not. <laughs> so this is the problem. This is the problem. So, so our behavior is really conditioned by our lack of knowledge. It's mm. ignorance. Mm, mm, mm. You see what I mean? That's and unfortunately, mm -hmm. nowadays with globalization, mm -hmm. with uh, you know uh, the, the modern media of communication, mm -hmm. which unfortunately are not uh, shifting our focus on ourselves, mm -hmm. they seem to be shifting our focus, keeping our focus on the outside world. Right. You see right. what I mean? <laughs> that's why. Chase. That's why I really appreciate what you are doing here. Thank you. What you are doing here mm -hmm. is using those modern means of communication mm -hmm. to really. Turn the camera on us. Oh, okay. Turn the focus and give us, you know, uh, uh, the opportunity to speak about ourselves about and to know each other. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, I learned so much about East Africa. Although I've never been to East Africa, mm -hmm. I really hope to go there. I know. I, will take I, I you know. There. Thank you. I, I take that invitation anytime. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, lately, as I said, for the past twenty years, I've known Southern Africa a lot mm -hmm. because I've worked again on there. twenty on the on the earliest early part of the liberation movement in South Africa, mm -hmm. a part of the history that South Africans themselves did not know. Mm -hmm. So I was able to, to work on that and produce films about the early intellectuals, mm -hmm. such as John Dube, who and his wife, Nokutela Dube. I had to learn about John Dube yes. through your work. Th that's why who founded, <laughs> who had, who founded yeah. the ANC, mm -hmm. the African National Congress, mm -hmm. in 1912. Mm -hmm. I mean, who, how many Africans really know that it's not Mandela who founded the ANC? <laughs> <laughs> that the ANC was founded before John, Mandela was born. Mm, by, before, John Dube. by John Langa Libalele Dube. And you can understand the Bantu language. Yeah. Langa means the sun. <laughs> I don't know, but yeah. Okay, Langa. Langa in most uh, Bantu languages means sun. Okay. Ilanga. Langa. Mm -hmm. See what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, anyway, so John Dube, uh, you know, was the founder of the ANC before Mandela was born. And he was educated in the US. He was educated mm. as a young boy. Mm. He was 16 years old mm -hmm. when he came to study in the U.S. in the 19th century. So he in Ohio. that knowledge and went back that, with that, it. That's right. Mm. And he went back with that knowledge mm. to start a school. In Africa. A school that was modeled on the Tuskegee Institute mm -hmm. that we mentioned at the beginning. Right. In relation to Booker Washington. Hmm. He took that model of manual educational industrial training to empower his people. To in the manual trades, so they could build activities for themselves and become self-employed. He did not start a school to train people to go look for employment. No, he said, I'm going to train you so you can employ yourself. Mm, mm. You can self-empower. Mm. You see what I mean? Yeah. So that's the same mentality, idea, goal that Booker T. Washington, the, this African-American leader, right. had his mind mm -hmm. for the, his, his people coming out of slavery. To with no no free even mentally. That's what we, and with no, no let, and also with the capacity to start businesses for themselves. Mm -hmm. As shoemakers, right. as, as uh, cabinet makers, mm -hmm. as... Uh, as is, is, that's right, you see what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's why John Dube, as a young, uh, youngster, when he came to study in the U.S., he discovered that that model that served very well the African Americans, and decided that he would go back to South Africa in 1900 and open a school. His school opened its door in 1900. Mm. It's the first industrial education school for blacks built by a black person, wow. and the first African who ever received the, the the Nobel Prize was a student in that school, Chief Albert Lutuli, who became later. Second, uh, the president of the ANC in the 60s hmm. received the Nobel Prize. He was a student in George Dube School in 1914.
Wow. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. So how, how his efforts are his, bringing new leaders and continuing that, 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 that That's why, that's why, that's why. Yeah. And many of the first, uh, early generation of the intellectuals in South Africa mm -hmm. went through that school. Right. People of different ethnic groups mm -hmm. that learned to know, to know each other, mm -hmm. started to know each other between Zulus and Kosas and, uh, you know, and uh, in the Beles. Yeah, they started knowing each other in the school yes. and developing a national spirit mm -hmm. of oneness. We are one people. Mm -hmm. And that's how independence and I the see. fight for democracy mm -hmm. started. I see. The power mm. of education again. Education. An education that is centered on the people mm. and on developing them and uplifting them. Mm. That's the kind of model Africa is still struggling to find. Oh, to this day, the big question in Africa is what kind of education serves Africa the best? Mm -hmm. And we still seem, seem to not have found that <laughs> magic solution. I think not magic. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be magic, but that's it's just appropriate. Like, mm -hmm. and adapted situation uh, right. a model do you think yes. them not giving because africa is not for not giving young people so much of an opportunity because i feel like if someone called me and they're like hey we need to change this curriculum do mm -hmm. you have i would have a billion ideas that's, but do i think that i have an opportunity for them that, to listen to me that i is, don't think that, that, so that is the thing mm -hmm. and often oftentimes uh, african leaders do not trust do not listen mm -hmm. to their own people in i, I mean i mean you go to any African country, yeah. they pay 10 times the money that it would take, an African would take, to do a better job than, than the people they bring, the, the people they bring from outside. Unfortunately. And they call that, yes, we're giving you aid, technical assistance. Which technical is assistance, us, which is really, in fact, assisting the people that are giving the aid no, than the than people, the receiver. The, the receiver. You see what I mean? I agree. So, so, so if... They, they trusted people, you know, Africa's own resources. I mean, we have so many talented people in Africa you who been... know this reality better than any person from outside. That is true. Who are able to translate <laughs> their knowledge into, uh, 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 you know, uh, 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 effective mm -hmm. a... <laughs> curriculum, a curriculum, no, see. you see? Mm -hmm. That would uh, create a better educational system for us. No, yeah, but unfortunately, mm -hmm. a lot of that is wasted. So all of that energy is wasted and really underappreciated. And what I I agree with you, and um, that is what you see how your father saw there's a mm. need for a school, and he actually did it himself that's, to start that. that. that that's, why, that's why. That's the same thing that I do. I don't know. We didn't talk much about okay, my okay, company, okay, but okay. at every mentor, I mm -hmm. help those Africans who even come with degrees, who come with careers. They have dreams and that, business ideas. That's right. That's but right. if you take the yes. French type of uh, way of implementing it, that's and right, try right. It, you fail because you're not being of, yourself. Of, uh, that's right because you, you are know? imposing a model. <laughs> That is, that, not is not you. that is not in your DNA. <laughs> but if true. you adapt a model that is African, like our right. problems, how yeah. we perceive, how yeah. we consume information, that, that is true. you find that that person is yeah. in a better position than uh, a doctor. Of course, yes. Position. And the results are going to be better. Mm -hmm. You see? And, uh, but what you're doing is empowering you know, people. Mm -hmm. And that's what we need to do. And that's why I felt that my father's example, however modest, modest it was, mm -hmm. it, it was an example it is an example that we still can follow today. Start very small. small. Start small, but don't meet, don't miss your date with history. But don't Do miss your date with, with history. history. Exactly. <laughs> and the power of one person. You see, you know, yeah, I believe in collective, you know, uh, uh, effort, but one person can change a lot. <laughs> I love that. You know the why? The power of one. Do you know why yes. I love that statement? That's right. That's right. Um, in my current program, you know, yes. I'm okay. doing my doctorate. Oh, wonderful. So Congratulations. one and of the major things that yes, I am right. trying to defend mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. we cannot see, like right now mm -hmm. we have that's the right. UN, you know, NDG yeah. looking right. for 17 trillion yeah. Yeah. To, yeah. to help African countries, yeah. and, you know, yeah. curb all this globalization and other issues. Mm -hmm. And I am like against mm -hmm. that, not because I don't want us to raise 17 no, trillion, no. Yeah. but because I believe one child who can <laughs> do one thing at a time. That's right. It can make more change than us sitting down waiting for you and to raise trade well, and, 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 and we have a lot of resources. <laughs> mm -hmm. It is not well spent. I mean, look, how many rich people you know in Kenya that have not put a dime in starting a school in their village? Mm 
they don't even care. They don't care. And those who have started, they <laughs> are taking many, any opportunity. That, that's right. <laughs> they rather spend their money mm -hmm. maybe in buying uh, uh, maybe the tenth Mercedes Benz. Yeah. The, you know. Yeah. But but investing. You know, just a fraction of that mm -hmm. in to starting a school mm -hmm. in a village and even paying using a fraction of that to pay the fees uh, for those kids and also to pay the salary of those teachers mm -hmm. who are not even asking for much, mm -hmm. who would be happy to teach kids in rural areas to give them proper education against just a fraction of the wealth that our rich people have accumulated. I would like to emphasize but on that they will the go, viewers. But, but, <laughs> How many rich people in Africa do you know today who have built a university, a building in a university to have even their name on it mm. so the name can be preserved for posterity? Right. How many of them do you know? <laughs> Not so but, many but, either. But, but in the U.S. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, rich people at least, mm -hmm. they, think, they, about, they, they think about posterity. They help. They think about this. investing mm -hmm. in those kind of things so that their name can be perpetuated. Yeah. But we don't have that idea. Or oh, rather spend, <laughs> use that money to go spend vacation maybe in uh, Europe. Mm -hmm. Or again, acquiring more material wealth. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, even taking that wealth and going to go put it in banks overseas. Instead of just investing a fraction of it for the benefit of the, of the, common, of the common people. That so that's true. why I believe that, you see, uh, with the little bit of money that my father had, mm -hmm. my parents had, mm -hmm. They were generous enough to invest it for the future, for the betterment of community. Which has changed the trajectory of uh, the whole country today. Thousands <laughs> and thousands of youngsters mm. who today have gained their own independence. Because of that school. Their own yeah, in intellectual, economic independence mm -hmm. because of the modest investment mm -hmm. of just a few classes. Right. Because later, you know, uh, after independence, you know, they kept working on the school. And later, the government had, uh, helped. Mm -hmm. and, and, and then the graduates of the school, mm -hmm. who later also became, who acquired more means right. because of the education, mm -hmm. also came back and invested in the school. Oh, yeah. right. And after my father's passing in 1999, mm -hmm. in 2000, the name of my father was given to the school. Oh. So it always was a public school, nice. but it, was, it didn't have anybody's name on it. Mm -hmm. But when my father passed away, they then the, the community mm -hmm. and the, the National Ministry of Education mm -hmm. decided that they would give his name to the school. I see. You see. So now let's go to the last question as okay. we wind up. Okay. What would you tell uh, our viewers, young people, millennials, uh, people who um, who are from Africa, but then mm. we are not doing much, if mm. anything, we are trying to disidentify with mm. Africa because it's kind of mm. lame and laid yeah. back and it's not that cool. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. What would mm -hmm. your advice be and what can we do about that? Well, first of all, I would say love your continent. Love your continent. Learn the history of your continent. Learn the history of your people. That's the only way you're going to love your continent. That's one thing. Second thing, as young people, you have to trust yourselves. A lot happens today to discourage young people, to make them feel that they cannot do things, that they have no power. I want the Africa's youth to understand that they have power. Because again, going back to history, history is a lesson. History can teach us a lot because the generations of the John Dubays who came as youngsters in America got a college education, mm. went back with the belief in themselves mm. and the belief in the potential of the country, yeah, of the that. continent. Mm -hmm. Like my old father who had, mm. very, who had very little education, mm -hmm. very little means, but who felt that going back mm -hmm. after the experience of the, the world out there, after the experience he got in the white people's world, mm -hmm. that he could come mm -hmm. and, as one person, also give an example. It's so a positive model. Mm. I want young people not to be jaded and not to be a skeptics. Mm. They have to have that belief in themselves. In themselves. Africa has a great future yeah. ahead of it. Yes, times are hard, but you don't abandon your country just because of one day challenge. Mm. If you look at the historic, the scale of Africa's history, the trouble we're just having is just one day in that scale. Mm. And that should not discourage us. Africa has a long future ahead of it, a long, bright future. But we have to build it day by day, yeah, minute by minute, mm -hmm. by believing ourselves. Mm -hmm. So yes, when we acquire knowledge, we have to go back or 
even if necessarily you don't go back physically, well, I mean, you can go back and forth, but translate, transport that knowledge. In a way and that can help that's your right. people. Because we are in a global world. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have to be necessarily to have your feet on the ground there. Right. You know, to, to do. There. I mean, you know, we, we are all needed at different levels. Right. We can create again, mm -hmm. you know, what you're doing now. Mm -hmm. You're creating a network. That's what we need. Mm -hmm. A lot can be taught, again, in fact, going back to curriculum. Mm -hmm. We could do a lot of, we could create, introduce a lot of change, a lot of positive change in the curriculum while being here. Hmm. Using the modern uh, media, media of technology, right. we can be teaching people back home. Mm -hmm. We can contribute to the education of the youth, ah, yeah, giving them the proper kind of education. So I simply will say, well, let's not doubt ourselves, you see. Believe in ourselves. Uh, believe in ourselves. I think that's what it is. Mm -hmm. And also believe that, yes, in spite of our differences, I mean, you speak Iguyu, I speak Bambara, we have a lot in common. Mm. I mean, that's the spirit that really animated our forefathers of uh, the early days of independence. They were Pan-Africanists. And the spirit of Pan-Africanism was not just limited to Africa. Mm. It's all the African diaspora. Whatever as far as Madagascar, is. Madagascar, <laughs> I mean, people of uh, the Indian Ocean. I mean, mm. all these people, they're part of that African, Pan-African spirit. Mm. The Caribbean, mm -hmm. Black America. Mm -hmm. We are Africans. It's the skin color. And well, and also not just the skin color, but also mm -hmm. the culture. Africanity is a certain set of values. Right. It's a worldview. Mm -hmm. You see? So so that we share. No, okay. We should be able to build on that. Mm. We will and we are trying to. And we that. have to. We have to. <laughs> so, so so failure is not an option. It's not an option. No, failure okay. is not. It's not an option. <laughs> I see. And so let's talk about your film as we finish now. Yes, um, yes, yes. I, I see. It was a lot. You say that it's going to be airing in St. Paul, Minnesota. Yes, that's right. We have not come up with a date exactly, but once okay. the date is set, um, at the East Side mm -hmm. Freedom Library, mm -hmm. uh, which is in St. Paul, mm -hmm. uh, Professor Peter Ratcliffe, who used to teach at McAllister, mm -hmm. uh, has decided that he wants to invite me mm -hmm. to come and show the film. Nice. So for the benefit, really, of the African community mm -hmm. and f for, you know, your wide... Uh, audience of listeners mm -hmm. uh, once uh, i know the date i will let you know okay. so that way you can publicize it That's and good. it's going to be free and open to the public nice. but at the same time i'm also uh, launching a, a fundraising operation for the benefit of the school okay. back home because the school is being challenged today mm -hmm. and uh, you know it's lacking in resources mm -hmm. uh, so i feel that you know uh, my part of my duty mm -hmm. is to also help Okay. Uh, the school with whatever resources mm -hmm. I can collect. So if people have donations, you know, in money, uh, that would be the best. Mm -hmm. They can also, it's a free will giving, okay. you know, uh, contribution nice. uh, when we show the film in uh, in, in, in St. Paul. Nice. So it's as a way to fundraise. Oh, okay, uh, at the St. Paul for, yeah. when they watch the film. Or, or either that, mm -hmm. or we could have, uh, you know, uh, you and I could work Any on another way. opportunity with the African okay. community in the Twin Cities okay. and see if we could have uh, set up a as another screening mm, okay. because one screening might not be enough right. we may have to do several screenings but again okay. uh, all for the goal of uh, uh, raising some funds all you right. know to help the school thank you and so i want to thank you so much mm -hmm. you know for inviting me mm -hmm. uh, and giving me that platform i mean uh, i've had uh, opportunities uh, you know as you said uh, uh, other media platforms uh, you know bbc uh, south african television so forth. i've given me platform but you you giving me a platform means a lot more to me hmm. because this is the initiative of a young woman, an African woman, who started this platform and has called upon me. So I cannot thank you enough no. for this. And I hope that whatever we've said tonight mm -hmm. is going to help, you know, inspire the audience mm -hmm. in some way. So if it, it doesn't, we hope that uh, they will be inspired one day. Right. You see? Right. So, but what we need to do is to have that conversation. Thank and you I so thank you very much for that. You are welcome. And I wish you the best of luck uh, in your endeavors. <laughs> I know you are studying, mm -hmm. and uh, it's not an easy thing. It's studying, <laughs> probably working and doing a different thing, mm -hmm. and parenting too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, well, you know, I mean, uh, that's how you do. You juggle. Mm -hmm. You see. So I wish you a best, the best of luck in the juggling. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> because we all have to do that. You know. I know. Again, thank mm -hmm. you so much again. Mm -hmm. So uh, I will say Asante Sana. Asante. But I don't know in Gikuyu. <laughs> 
that's why he is Asante San. Mm -hmm. But in Gikuyu, how do you say? Gikuyu, you say Newe Ramono. Newe Ramono. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, and in Bambara, in mm -hmm. my language, you say Iniche. Mm -hmm. Iniche. 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 Okay. It means literally you and the work you have done. Mm -hmm. You and the work. Uh, Iniche. <laughs> so that's a way of saying thank you. Thank so you in so Iche much. in my language. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you so much for coming. We yes. really appreciate bringing you here. Um, you. At least my audience who were here and who are gonna be watching, you guys, um, you will get to Again, understand. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you all. Thank so you. So have a good night and yes. thank you guys for joining in. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you.